but that organizations, forward-thinking organizations, are looking for a leader. And GM is a leader in the automotive industry. So how do we make sure that the thinking professionals, creative thinking professionals, are applying what they know in their settings? It's another one of those questions that you have to ponder for some time. So motivate and engage your audience. How do we do that? We want to do it in a variety of different ways. One way is to make sure that we are talking low, uh, as loudly and clearly as we possibly can. But we've got to have this thing called confidence, and we want to project a calm, confident tone while speaking. We also want to make sure that you know that you are the expert. And even if we don't know what we're doing sometimes, you still got to act like we know what we're talking about. Uh huh? But you got here for a reason. You're in the position that you're in for a reason, because you're good at what you do. So when it comes to speaking and connecting, sharing that information needs to be second nature. Audience members can tell when you are nervous or do not know what you're talking about. And you can tell I'm extremely nervous up here, right? <laughs> Got a feeling about what I think I know I'm talking about, just a little. If not, I do a very good job in sharing it. And lastly, confidence can be gained through good preparation. And then that last, those last two words, ever important, effective practicing. See, because Chauncey Billups does what? He's a basketball player? Uh, Mojo, 95.5, what is he? Radio personality. So when he walks into a room, or either one of them walk into a room, you kind of know what they do. When you walk into a room, what do people say or know or think? Depends on the room. Very good. So how do we move our brand forward when we're interacting with an audience? When we are wanting to make sure that they understand what we stand for, that brand that we want to project to them. We put this up here because effective practicing suggests that those people that I just mentioned, you will see Chauncey Billups shoot basketballs over and over and over. People like Tiger Woods, I understand, hits 1,000 golf balls a day. Mojo, I imagine he reads, well, like I do. Whenever I'm reading a newspaper, I read it like I'm doing a radio broadcast, which is pretty strange if, you're, if somebody's watching you. <laughs> but what do you do in terms of being a good leader? How do you practice that, being an effective <laughs> manager? Public speaking has the same kind of thing and wants you to practice public speaking. Some tips to remember, because we have a very short um, presentation here. Confidence comes with practice, as we're talking about. We want you to refer to your sources correctly. Please make sure that you don't give out information and someone does the research and says, that's not right. Attitude is everything. Because when you walk in and you've got that attitude and you know what you're talking about, it's important that you convey that through your conversation. Preparation, as we talked about, is key. But the first 30 seconds are more important than anything else. Why? Because that's the hook. That's the way you connect with people and you tell them what it is that you're going to talk about. It's kind of like going to the movies with somebody and knowing in the first 25 minutes you need them to be quiet. Why? Because the director is trying to set up the rest of the movie. You do the same thing when you're doing public speaking. The first 30 seconds are extremely important. But lastly, you've got to make sure you have a strong conclusion. <coughs> now, I'll simply begin to close with a story that hopefully exhibits everything that we've talked about. Um, one of my experiences that may have been mentioned is I used to be the executive director of the Detroit Police Athletic League under the Archer administration. And we had 18,000 kids in that program, $2.1 million budget, and we were delivering you know, different kinds of activities and services to them. My job as the executive director was to manage the 50 employees and the 17 police officers that worked for me to deliver those programs and services. Well, one of the things that happened is a young man came in, one of our more senior youth, and he wanted to talk with me. Sat down, we had this conversation. And he explained to me that he was experiencing some strong problems within his family and they were beginning to affect him academically. He had two brothers and two sisters. And inside of his home, there was this sad case of domestic abuse that was taking place. 
the father was really, you know, doing some very negative things for a period of a years. And so what happened was, it, his job was to wake up in the morning and to help straighten up the furniture from the tussle that his mom and dad had. It was a really bad case. And he also had the responsibility of leading his brothers and sisters to do their chores, to complete their homework despite what was going on in the home. Well, that got so far to the point that uh, later on, his, his brother, who was one step below him, wound up experiencing drugs. The sister, who was one step below that brother, wind up getting involved with um, uh, drugs. Well, the, 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 father, the youngest brother, the next brother was involved with drugs. The woman was involved with, huh, it's a tough story, being sexually abused by family members. And then the youngest brother tried to rob a store at night point. Well, I don't know why, that, why you did that. You walk into the store, give me everything you got. Um, at night point, really tough situation. So I explained to him, I cannot help because I'm sitting there saying, wow, I, I run a nonprofit organization. I'm not a psychologist or, you know, I don't really know how to get into sociologists to deal with that particular situation that he was experiencing. So I said, well, listen, um, how are things now? He said, things are getting a little bit better. Uh, my dad has moved on. My mom is taking care of us. My sisters and brothers are all okay, even though my brother has gone to jail and had to do two years. Um, things are getting better. I said, well, great. But you're still not feeling good because it's starting to affect your academic career. He said, yes. But the things that I share with you in closing that scenario out is that that young man that came into my office is me. That's my mother, my sister, my brothers, my aunts, I mean, my, 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 my family. But I know that if, in fact, I can go through a scenario like that and stand here in front of GM executives and have done all the things that Amy said that I did in my resume and have an MBA and be talking in front of, you know, undergraduate and graduate schools of business at the University of Phoenix, that you, too, can do the very same thing that I'm doing. What do you think about that story? Awesome story? Good. The message was one thing. But remember, like we said in the presentation, we couldn't focus on the audience. The message is what's most important. Was it emotionally moving? Did you connect with the audience? Did you engage with the audience? Did I prepare for that? Yes. So a story was told. And storytelling, as I pointed out, is very, very effective. You can, in fact, move an audience in the direction that you need to move to share the information that you want to share. I want to tell you something before we close here. A little secret, all right? It's our secret. Nobody else knows, right? So you need to lean in just a little bit, all right? Can I get you to lean in? You all already have the skills, knowledge, and abilities to do this. So congratulations. Just take it. That's the, that's the secret. That's what's top secret, confidential, classified, because it's buried deep within. And one of the things that was mentioned, I write it in my book all the time, The Six Routines of Self-Discovery, as I was talking with my evaluators over here, um, is that we got to explore within so that we can advance our lives. And when we explore within, we're going to find out that this public speaking thing is possible if we want to be a leader in the new GM. And we've got to practice it. That's all I have. Well, questions? Let's uh, ask a few questions. I have a mic so I can be more than glad to come up. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask that you just wait for the mic. Thank you. Uh, so, I don't mean like it. I've heard that pretty loudly. My question is to you. Are you speaking in front of the public? I'm sorry. You do need to use the mic because there's people on the phone oh, okay. and they can't sorry. hear you without the microphone. That'll work. Sorry. All right, my question to you is when you're speaking in front of a public audience and it's going south, what do you do to pull yourself out? Humor is one way, and then giving it to the audience, as I did, is another way. People support what they create. So humor would be one. The other way would be to be able to give it to the audience in ways that they are engaged in the actual conversation. So if it's going south, ask those open-ended questions. What is it that you think we should be doing based on the topic that you're talking about? Another question, please? 
Sometimes just getting started is the hardest part for me. So how do you overcome just beginning uh, to get the conversation going? Yeah, you, that's a great question. Thank you for asking it. Um, the, the, remember, as we talked about, the first 30 seconds are most important. Uh, but practicing it at home, practicing it in front of the mirror are two ways that you probably have already heard of. They're not brand new. But the idea is to remember the message that you want to convey. What response do you want from the individual you're going to talk to? What are you looking to have happen? And then your approach, according to what you know about your audience, is the direction you want to take. So if you think that you want the person to be happy about this, then, uh, and it's good news, they're going to be hired and promoted, then that's an easy do. If you're going in to have that tough conversation, that discipline, or that, uh, that corrective action kind of conversation, then it is always best to uh, diffuse it. And I love humor in a variety of different ways that it is very low key. You're going to go in and you're going to have uh, hi, how are, how are things going today? How's the weather? Some very small introductions. How are you feeling today? To get that person engaged, because you want those eyebrows that are meeting when they first come in to kind of loosen up a little bit. So I will always suggest opening it up with some very small talk and maybe a little bit of humor. Yeah. I think you asked a question, but uh, you know, uh, you, um, like you said, you know your subject. Um, you do your breathing, you do your rehearsing. Uh, you get up on the stage, and um, your mind goes blank. How do you get that back? Well, 